Hey there, Ben Lipper here. I have something really cool I want to share with you today. Today, I would like to walk you through the process I use step by step to code some of my best robots. Now, this isn't specific to a certain robot or design. These are the steps that I use every single time I code a robot. If you've ever like built a robot and then you're like, all right, here we go, and I'm ready to go, but I don't have the code yet, and I'm like trying to figure out how to make this thing go, that's what I want to walk you through today. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here we are in Vexcode. If you don't have Vexcode installed, or actually even if you do, you know, regardless whether or not you have Vexcode, there's a link in this video, go and click it. Um, it's going to, well, first it'll send you instructions for how to install Vexcode or get access to Vexcode. Then it's going to show you exactly the steps that we take in this video so that you can go back and review it whenever you want. You'll have like up close pictures of the code. You'll have it in high resolution. It'll be super great. Very much worth it. So go ahead and click that link in the video, pause it right now, do that, and then come back here and let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, once you've got Vexcode installed and open, the first, first thing you always need to do is click on this devices button. Um, you basically have to tell the robot what on earth is hooked up. So you have to pick whether you have a first gen or second gen brain. If you're like, I have no idea, look at the screen. If it's a color screen, you're gonna be second gen. If it is a black and white screen, or it's like kind of this blue and black screen almost, it's a little weird. But if it's not like rainbow colors, then it means it's first gen. If it can only make two colors, like black and this kind of bluish white color, then it's a first gen. So go and click on whichever one you have. I have a first gen brain. I've got a second gen one as well, but I'm gonna be programming a first gen one today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The next thing I like to add is the drivetrain. Most robots, I would say almost all robots in fact, have what we call a drivetrain. And that is just the motors that make the wheels spin. And that is super useful because once you have a drivetrain, you're able to basically drive around the field and get to all the places you need to score. So you'll hit add a device and you're gonna hit this drivetrain. I have a two motor drivetrain, four motors is very rare in VEX. If you got that, click that. But basically I'm just gonna click that. It's asking what's your left motor? I plugged that one into port one. The right motor was plugged into port six. It says, what gyro? Did, what port did you plug the gyro into? Now, even if you have a gyro, do not select a port here. That, it like destroys your code later. So go ahead and uncheck this gyro button. I'll explain what it is in like some future video or class or whatever. But for the time being, just take my word for it. Don't use the gyro. All this stuff you don't care about, just hit done. Great, you've just configured your drivetrain. The next thing is to configure whatever else you have on your robot. I'm gonna go through a few things um, that you might have. The first one is a motor. Say that you got something kind of like, oh, this arm. So you see how it's like one motor and it's just spinning some gears and every time the motor spins up, it, like the arm goes up, every time the motor spins down, arm goes down. That is what you'd select a motor for. And this one actually happens to be plugged in port four. I'm just gonna label this one up here. I'll call it the arm. If you had two arms, like, you know, label it something reasonable. That's all you need to do. You leave this the same. If you, I like to leave this at normal, and then if later you discover that, hey, uh, it's going opposite of what it should be, then you can reverse it just like that. But I'll leave it at normal usually to start, and I'll reverse it later. Hit done. The next thing I wanna show you is what's called a motor group. So if you have two motors that are hooked together like this, where one spins and it always will spin the other one. So sometimes they're on opposite ends of a shaft. In this case, they're geared together. The key is, they spin together 100% of the time. You're gonna add a motor group. Mine are on ports eight and nine. And anytime you have a motor group, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, you need to reverse one motor. So you don't know which one it'll be, but almost always one will be normal, one will be reverse. We'll leave it like that. I'm gonna call this one, this is actually a flywheel for my robot. So I'm gonna go ahead and select flywheel and then say done. Awesome, so now, what are we going to do? Let's go ahead and code it. I'm gonna say this is it. Maybe you got some other stuff. Maybe you have some other like cool mechanism on your robot. You could add that as well. But for the time being, I am going to go ahead and call this good. The last thing you do once you add all of these is you add what's called a controller. So you'll add a device and look, there's the controller. This will let you drive the robot. So the first thing is how do you wanna drive it? This is all on the left stick, right? You move it like up, down, left, right, that's gonna make the robot go forward, backward, and it'll make it turn. You'll click here again, got it on the right stick now, forward, backward, and turn. 
This is my personal favorite. So like if you are not set in stone and which one you're going to pick, pick this one. Um, it's called Arcade. One stick is forward backward. The other stick is turn. This is what like 90% of the best teams in the world use. They all love this ability because it means you can drive forward really slowly or you can turn in place really slowly. If you try that on any of the other schemes, it's really hard. This one, it's super easy. If that doesn't entirely make sense, it'll make sense once you start driving. So yeah, go ahead and give this one a try if you haven't already. This is my personal favorite. You also have this one just in case you need it. But this one's my favorite where you've got like up, down on one side and left, right on the other. Awesome. So we are good to go. Now, I could go ahead and click over here, right? And maybe like control my arm here and control my flywheel here. And that's great, you know. I am able to, like I could just take this code and hit download right now. But I'm not, I don't want to do that. On my robotics teams, we always had a principle that basically said, you should not have a harder time driving your robot because of the code. So if there's something that can be made easier to drive just using some simple code, we should do that. We shouldn't just like try and brute force our way around it by being better at driving. Like if I can give you more precise control of the arm, I shouldn't be making you try and like get it to the perfect height using these buttons that are gonna like go up and then down and then up and then down and you'll just keep missing. Um, or if you have a flywheel and you just spin it for 20 seconds, you shouldn't have to hold the button for 20 seconds. We just click it and then like the code will spin it for 20 seconds. That's what I want to show you right now. Let's go ahead and get back into Vexcode and we'll code that up. So here we are back in Vexcode. Let's go ahead and start with the arm just because it's on top. The arm, this one specifically, I know I need really precise control over. How am I going to do that? So now an arm, what we can do is we can we usually control it with buttons, right? You have one button and you hold it and like the arm goes up and you hold the other one and it goes down. That's great. It's really hard to get the arm exactly where you need it though. How do you fix that? You use what's called a joystick control on it. So a joystick control allows you to control the position of your arm using a joystick. So if you push the joystick all the way up, the arm goes up at full speed. If you push it up just a little bit though, now your arm is going up nice and slow. And now you pull it down and the arm's gonna go down nice and slow. And it gives you much, much more accurate control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a when started event. Oh, look at that, there's one right here. If you need one, it's in events. It's like right there and you could grab a fresh one. And then I am also going to decide what joystick I want it on. So I'm gonna have my when started block. I'm gonna go to control and find a forever loop. So it's just something that looks like this. And I will say when started, repeat forever. And there are kind of two key things I need to do to my arm, actually three, but we'll do start with two. The first one is I am going to set the velocity to whether whatever my joystick is. Velocity is just speed. So if I set my velocity to say whatever the joystick is spitting out, right? So I'm gonna use the axis D. If you look at the controller, that's the up down one that's on the right hand side. So it's basically, here's my controller, right? It's this one that goes up and down right here. I'm using the left, right for turning. Up, down is not used for anything. Let's use that. So controller D position. I'm setting the velocity of my, oops, my arm to that. So my arm is gonna go basically as fast as I've moved it. If the stick's in the middle, that's gonna be a value of zero. Arm's not moving. If I push it all the way up to the top, it's gonna be a value of 100. 100% arm's gonna be moving as fast as it can. If I push it all the way to the bottom, I get a value of negative 100%. The arm will now be moving down as fast as it possibly can. And that's what I want to accomplish here. Now, it's great to set your arm to spin at a certain speed. You do actually have to tell it to spin though. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this. It's going to be a spin arm forward. You're like, well, what if it wants to go down? If you go forward at negative 100% power, that's the same as saying go reverse. I know it's a little weird, especially if you haven't played a lot with negative numbers and accelerations and velocities and stuff. But um, that's, that's how VEX code works. And there's good reasons for that that you know, we'll cover later. Now, we've got that. One more thing that I like to do on my arms is not inside the forever loop. If I do this, it's going to be very bad. If I do this, this says set arm stopping to, and then I can choose how the arm stops. Now, this block is really cool. It, this bottom part controls what your arm does when it moves. This controls what your arm does when it is not moving. If you set it to coast, it means your arm kind of floats. 
it'll usually kind of drift down slowly as like just as it's sitting there if you have it on coast i like to say hold that means all right you're going to hold your position as long as it's i'm not trying to move it and then obviously as soon as you start moving joystick takes over and that lets you control the arm great that is your arm my arm is now fully coated now let's go to move on to the flywheel the flywheel is coated a little bit differently we want instead to have the flywheel on two buttons and you're like well you just click that that will control the flywheel using two buttons one button i'll hold it for forward and i'll let go and it'll stop the other button i'll hold it and it'll like spin reverse and then it'll stop when i let go now i never want my flywheel spinning backwards you only shoot with it spinning forward so that's silly like why would you have that and then yeah i don't know that's not the control i want so what i'm going to do is instead i want it so i'm going to click the top button that's going to start it and then i'll click the bottom button that is what's going to stop my flywheel so i'm going to grab a when controller this is button l up that's going to be the start so when controller l up is pressed i'm going to go ahead and spin my flywheel forward additionally how fast do you think i want to spin it well i don't know i'm going to try 100 percent. i like full power if you discover you need to spin it at a slower speed though this is where you set it maybe 80 percent is what gets you exactly into that goal zone i'm going to set mine into 100 just for funsies though and maybe this isn't a flywheel by the way maybe you know in the slapshot game we had this weird there's a lot of weird things in slapshot one of them is there's this like weird purple spinner thing right you gotta spin part of the field like i think it's like 16 times or no it's more than that it's like 48 or 72 times in order to get all the discs to pop out it's a lot of spins basically and so i don't want to sit there holding the button i just want to click the button once and then it's good to go and so that's what this is trying to do so basically as soon as i push l up it's going to set it to 100 power and spin it forward now what do i want to do when l down is pressed so i'll grab another event when button l down is pressed that is just going to stop it do i need to set the velocity again when i stop it no but hey you know when i stop it why don't i also set the stopping mode to something now arms we said it's great to hold them if you're spinning a flywheel and you're spinning it fast you don't really want it to hold what you want is just to have it kind of naturally coast down the reason is if you try and like you got something that, or really anything if it's spinning really fast in your robot and you suddenly try and stop it if you're like grabbed the wheel of a bike while it was spinning fast and it like hurts your hand because like you're trying to stop it that's what the motor feels so that's not good for it so instead what i like to do is i'll set them to coast so arms great to set to hold flywheels not so great to set to hold all right and so that is it this is actually the full code for my robot so i've got this control here i've got a flywheel i've got an arm if i had like a second arm or some other cool apparatus i could totally add that but for the time being i think this is all that i need i'm going to go ahead and download this onto the robot and let's see what happens now one quick note about downloading if you plug it into the computer and you see this little brain turn green up here and there's like a little download button that appears that's awesome just click the download button it's going to download if you plug it in and that doesn't happen what you're going to do is you're going to come up here and you're going to click on that brain now underneath the brain you'll see this button that says connect and so you'll hit this connect button and then you kind of got to decide i you don't know which one it's going to be so you pick one you hit connect if the brain turns green it means you got it if it didn't doesn't turn green it means you missed you gotta pick the other one so you'll hit brain connect you'll click the other one click connect hopefully that'll work if there's like three or four you might have to go through all of them but the key is you're just picking like which one the brain is and once you get it once it's always the same one so it doesn't like try and change it up on you it's not a game it's just trying to figure out like what is it and then just always pick that one every time you want it hit download and your robot is ready to go let's go and head over to the robot and see what it's actually doing all right so here we are actually at the robot we are going to go ahead and try all of our operations let's go and test the arm the arm there's no buttons for it remember i just moved my joystick up and down just like this and oh look at that there goes the arm things are looking good and then finally you remember my flywheel here we go i'm gonna go ahead and spin it up and oh there it goes it looks like we are doing good spinning nice and fast and i want to stop it i'm gonna go ahead and hit the stop button and there we go it coasts down nice and smooth to a stop and that is it like you now know how to code a robot 
even like a relatively advanced one, these are the same principles I use when I code my robots that I post videos of. I do sometimes make funny little modifications and I invite you, you know, go ahead, explore, try things. Say, ooh, I wonder, I have an on button and an off button. Could I have the same button be on and off? Maybe you say, ooh, maybe I want an on button. I don't want an off button though. I'm actually gonna go ahead and have it run for 10 seconds and it's gonna turn itself off at the end of 10 seconds for my flywheel. Maybe your arm you wanna play with having it on multiple controls. Maybe you want the button still, but you also want the joystick. I don't know. Play around with it, see what you can do. Like I said at the beginning of the video, go and click the link under this video though. It's gonna basically give you details and give you access to all of the information I covered here. That way you'll have it forever and you can always come back and reference it. Other than that though, thank you so much for watching. As always, like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing what you build.